first let us look at what do we mean by google cloud cli this is a set of command line tools used for managing your google cloud resources such as commands for authentication configuration and other interactions with the google cloud resources you can use the cli tools to the cloud shell which is a pre-configured cli within the google cloud console CLI can also be used on your local machine terminal for which you first need to install the Google Cloud SDK on your local machine. Now we will look at some useful command line tools available with Google Cloud CLI. The G Cloud is the main set of tools that perform common Google Cloud platform tasks such as managing compute engine virtual machine instances, deployment to app engines, installing and upgrading components as well as managing authentication and configuration. Another important command line utility that is included in the CLI is the GSUtil. It stands for Google Storage Utility. It lets you access the Google Cloud Storage from the command line and is used for performing tasks related to storage such as managing the storage buckets and objects. The third tool Used in the Google Cloud CLI is the BQ, which is a useful CLI tool to interact with the BigQuery. The first step is to figure out what our prerequisites are and configure them. Then we will look at the essential G Cloud commands. After that, we will work with the GSUtil for different cloud storage use cases. We will also look at how the BQ utility for uh, can be used for various big query use case. Finally, we will see how the cloud shell works. Now let's start our hands-on lab. Now another important prerequisite for using the cloud CLI on your local machine is to have the Google Cloud SDK installed. So after we install the Google Cloud SDK on our local machine, we'll go to our command prompt. Now we can start using the CLI commands. First, need to initialize the G Cloud in order to interact with the GCP service. For that, we will need to run the command G Cloud in it. Now we can see that we are logged in as our email address. It also shows the list of projects that already are in our Google Cloud account. We can uh, set our default project. So for verifying the initialization, we can run the G Cloud auth list command, which will show the list of authenticated accounts. We can see our account details over here. To verify our SDK installation, we can run the following command. This will show the version of SDK, PQ, Core, and GSUtil. For listing the available packages, we run this command. So we can see all the components and whether they are installed or not. Now, if you want to update your G Cloud CLI to the latest version, run the following command. All our components are up to date. To set a default Google Cloud project to work on, run this command. Let's specify the name of our project. To show the current cloud environment details, we run the following. This shows us all the G Cloud current info, including the versions and default account and project name. Another important G Cloud command is the G Cloud Help, which provides an extensive documentation regarding any GCP resource we need help with. If you want to view our current G Cloud configuration, we can use this command. Look at another important CLI tool, which is the GSUtil. It mainly deals with the cloud storage, we will look at some of its use cases. The first thing we can do with the GSUtil is to create a cloud storage bucket. To do that, 
you run the gsutil mb command followed by the bucket name. Our bucket has successfully been created in our current project. After we are done creating our bucket, we can create a file locally and upload it to our bucket through the gsutil. So what we can do is, we can use the info command followed by the text. And then we write the text file name. To upload this text file to a newly created bucket, we can use the following command. So we can see that our file has been uploaded to our bucket. To list the objects that are currently available in our cloud storage bucket, we can use this command. You can also know the size of our bucket using this command. The size is 30 bytes. Now to list the details of a particular object, use the following command. Finally, to delete a particular object from a bucket, we can use the following command. Now our object has successfully been deleted. Now we will look at some of the BQ commands in the command line utility within the Google Cloud CLI. BQ is a Python based command line utility for tasks related to big query, such as manipulating data sets and running queries. So if you want to learn more about the BQ command line tool, we can use the BQ help command. Now, if you want to list the data sets that are already present in our project, we use the command pqls. If you want to create a new data set, we will use the pqmk command followed by the data set name. Now, data set has successfully been created. Now we will explore one of the sample tables provided by BigQuery through the command line tool. This is a Shakespeare table that contains an entry for every word present in every Shakespeare play. To display the information about this table, we can use the BQ show command. This shows the information about this particular table. We will run an SQL query over the Shakespeare table using the BQ query command. This example query retrieves the number of times a substring brazen appears in all the Shakespeare's plays. Now this query counts the words from the Shakespeare table that contain the substring brazen. Notice that we are not looking for an exact match over here, but instead we are looking at whether the word contains this substring. When we, when we run this query, so the output shows that there are six words that contain the substring and also shows their frequency. Now we will see how to create a new table and place it in a new data set using the BQ command line utility. To create our first data file, we will download data from the US Social Security website about the top 1000 most popular names in the US each year. From this website, we get a zipped file containing CSV files for each year for the past 120 years. I have extracted the CSV file for the year of 2012. So first, we will open this file in the text editor to see how it looks like. We can see that there are three columns 
name, gender, and the number of babies with that name. We will now use the use the BQ load command followed by the table data source and table schema. This will create the table and load the data into it. To see the details of our newly created table, we will use the BQ show command followed by the data set name and the table name. We can see the columns and their data types as well as other information about the table. Now we can run queries on our data set. For example, we can look at the top 5 most common girl names using this query. You can see the names and their frequency. Similarly, we can also look at the top 5 most unique boys names with the following query. So now we know how to run queries and load data using the BQ command in the command line interface. Now we will see how the Google Cloud Shell works. From here, we will activate our Google Cloud Shell with this button. If we are using it for the first time, it will take some time to load. This is our interface. When the cloud shell starts, it automatically provisions a compute in engine virtual machine instance. This instance persists while your cloud shell is active. And when we type ls, it will show all the files in our home directory. We can see that currently it only contains the readme cloud shell txt file. If we want to add a text file to our home directory, we will type the command touch followed by the txt file name. We can also create a new directory with the mkdir command followed by the directory name. Now we can cd to our directory. So now when we type the touch command and create a new file, it will be created in our new directory. Now typing ls will show the files in our new directory. Now let's look at how we can use the cloud shell editor to edit our files. We will click on open editor. We can see the text files that we created on the left side. We can also see our newly created directory and the file within it. Now we can add the text required in the text file. And then we'll go back to the terminal. So we can use the cat command followed by our file name. Now we can see the text that we just inserted in our file. Cloud Shell Editor can also work as an IDE for several supported languages such as Python, Java, Node.js, C Sharp and Go.